Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will run the migration and create the database using a code-first approach. In the previous few lessons, we created our domain models as C-sharp classes with properties that will be converted into tables and columns in the database. The planet class, for instance, contains two foreign keys. Additionally, we created the HiKaiTalkDB context class, which includes a constructor to instantiate the HiKaiTalkDB context class with the necessary database configuration options for entity framework when a dependency injection call is made. Here we also have properties based on dbset classes. The db context will encapsulate these three properties and map them into tables in the database when we initiate migrations with entity framework in this lesson. Furthermore, we have created a connection string in the upsetting JSON file. This connection string is required to connect Entity Framework with a SQL Server database. It contains the necessary information for Entity Framework to establish a connection to the database, including details such as the server name, database name, and authentication string. In the program file, we have registered the dependency injection with connection string configuration. With these changes in place, we are now ready to initiate the migration and create the database. Let's open Tools and then New Get Package Manager Console. There are two standard commands required to migrate and create the database. The first command we will run is Add Migration, and I will add an additional message Migration init with the message Migration init encoded in double quotes. The message can be any text you like. Let's run it. And the message confirms that the build has succeeded. This command has gathered all the data from the project I initially explained when we started this lesson and created this folder. So we now have the migrations folder and inside it we have two files created as C sharp classes, which will serve as a seed for the future creation of the database when we run the second command to create the actual database. The first file is named with the date stamp plus the initial migration suffix. It's class named after the message we included when we executed the command migration init, and it inherits from the predefined class migration. It contains two methods, up and down. The up method will be executed when we are creating a database or when we are making changes to existing tables. The down method, as you may have guessed, is executed when we roll back our changes. Inside the up part, you can see various commands, such as create table. These commands are responsible for creating the tables, including their constraints, primary keys, foreign keys, and more. The createTable command will be executed, and an actual table in the database will be created. Later, when we provide actual data, this file will be updated with additional, like insert data methods, to insert the seed data into the database. We will revisit this file once we have real data to insert into the database. The down part is triggered if we need to drop the table. So don't worry, it's all quite straightforward. And the second file is named HiKaiTalkDB context snapshot. This file in Entity Framework is an automatically generated snapshot of the database schema as it exists after applying migrations. It essentially serves as a historical record of snapshot. This snapshot is used by Entity Framework to track changes and ensure that subsequent migrations are applied correctly and in the proper order. Now, if you open SQL Server Management Studio, you will see that it's still empty. To create the database, we need to run the second command, which is update database. On your computer, you can run this command without any options. And on my side, I will run it with verbose option so that you can compare the information provided during the database building process. Let's run it. The message done confirms that it was completed successfully. Let's open SQL Server Management Studio, refresh it, and as you can see, the database is created. We can access our tables and columns. Our code is now mapped to the database using the code-first approach. The application is now ready to receive commands from controllers and action methods to perform crude operations in the database, which will be the topic of the next lessons. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!